I'm back, baby, again, for like the second. What am I doing with my life? Hey, speaking of what am I doing with my life, Reddit, you know, they decided they wanted, you know, to give me a fucking avatar. Like, apparently, because I have so much karma, which is something that I definitely shouldn't be bragging about, they decided they wanted to give me like a weird NFT avatar. That was weird. That was a weird thing to wake up to. Um, if you want to know what it is, here it is. I am never using it, okay? Because it looks like actual dog shit, granted. Compared to the other ones that I could have gotten, this one looks the coolest. And that's saying something. Which made me realize something about myself. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> like, here I was back in the old days, you know, having dreams as, you know, when I was a kid. Here I am just doing random shit on the internet. I have 19,000 karma. What am I doing? But existential crisis aside, welcome back to Tony Kakakoi chapter 201. We are now past chapter 200. God bless, okay? I don't, I don't have to do that weird little intro anymore, okay? Thank you to Bathhouse Scans for, you know, giving us the chapter. And apart from that, except from the existential crisis, I have nothing left to say. Let's just jump right into it. Our chapter starts off with us finding out that uh, two of the five noblemen have died. Yes, two of the most unimportant characters so far, except from the high school girls, have died. One of them, you know, they, they tripped, they fell off a cliff, they died. The other one was trying to probably go to China or anything, trying to find the mysterious object. And this big wave came along, he drowned, his ship was destroyed, both of them died, okay? Now, how did the other noblemen find out that they died? I don't know. But I, I, I guess because they didn't come back, that that's probably a hint that, oh, wait, maybe, maybe they died. So the other noblemen, you know, they start talking about this and they realize something that they probably should have realized since the very beginning. Ah, this is kind of challenging, don't you think? Huh, no fucking clue. Anyways, so, you know, they start talking about that, right? When uh, the dark skinned nobleman he points out that apparently, to make matters worse, the Emperor is also interested in Kaguya, right? So, you know, they're all like, oh no, what's gonna happen, right? But he tells them, don't worry about it. He apparently just got rejected, like, almost instantly, so it just doesn't even matter to us. So, you know, all three noblemen, you know, they're like, okay, yeah, we're all right. The Emperor might be powerful and stuff, but that doesn't matter. You know, he got kicked out, so, you know, we're all fair game, right? So, they keep talking, and, you know, they're trying to think of ways to, you know, actually get their item that they were supposed to get without, you know, dying. The noblemen still keep talking about how they're trying to get their treasure, until one of the noblemen, specifically the dark-skinned one, realizes something and decides to tell to the other noblemen, because apparently, he wants to share, okay? But whatever, okay? He's like... Question, was it ever really mentioned that we really had to get the item? Now, the other noblemen look at him very confused, right? Because they're like, what do you mean, not getting the actual item? He explains that Kaguya herself said, you know, the, 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 the item that you're going to get is super rare, super mysterious. No one's ever seen it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, okay? What's to say Kaguya herself doesn't actually know what it looks like? And apparently the other noblemen, you know, they decide to have more than five brain cells. They realize, oh, oh, wait, that actually makes a lot of sense, right? So the dark-skinned nobleman apparently goes ahead and tries this out on Kaguya. We cut to the dark-skinned nobleman, basically, you know, showing off to Kaguya and her family that, hey, I found the treasure that you were looking for, right? Apparently, it was a sword. Uh, the name is, like, uh, Sword of the Seventh Celestial Generation. What a fucking stupid name, but it does give you a hint about Kaguya's past, all right? But uh, the, the, he, he bullshits his way all the way, you know, he's like, oh, this, this sword was super hard. You know, I had to go through the mountainous tasks to, you know, get it, right? And, you know, Kaguya is actually a little bit impressed, all right? You know, he's getting kind of happy. He's like, oh, congrats, I've won. I, I've won, GG everyone, all right? You know, Kaguya is like, oh. I am very proud of you, and I am very surprised. I am surprised, however, that this sword actually exists in the first place, right? Because apparently, it was all made up, all right? She basically, she thought of this weird-ass sword and was like, that'll do, all right? Basically, she lied to him. There was never going to be a way that he was going to win, right? And it turns out that the sword is a dud, obviously. <laughs> 
the dark skinned emperor leaves in um embarrassment he got the other two noblemen find him right and they're like oh my god how did it go and he explains that it didn't go well it would the kaguya was not fooled by this sword he doesn't mention however that apparently the sword was made up by her but hey you know maybe that would have been helpful for them you know to figure out that oh wait maybe our items also probably don't exist but whatever okay uh the, the other two noblemen they realize that because because apparently the sword looked very convincing they have to step up their game even harder to you know even have a chance of you know getting Kaguya's love which spoiler alert none of them get <laughs> But whatever, and you know the other dark, the dark-skinned uh, nobleman. He realizes uh, out of the corner of his eye that oh wait, that's the emperor. He's entering the building as we speak. We cut to Skazachan and the emperor basically talking to each other. Well, not really. The emperor is running up to her, and you know, is excitedly saying that he got an invitation from Kagi so they could like meet up and talk. Right? Skazachan is very proud of him, right? Because you know he's tr he's finally you know interacting with his love of his life. All right, and you know the emperor thanks Skazachan for basically helping him out with the letters that she basically wrote by herself. But okay. And, you know, Skusa Chan is also, you know, you know, she says, thank you, thank you for that, right? But she does give him, like, a little bit of um, advice, if you will. Basically, try your hardest to, you know, hide the fact that you didn't actually write those letters. I wrote them. Try to hide that fact, right? Because, you know, if, if Kaguya were to ever find out that the letters weren't actually real, weren't actually written by him, you know, the entire operation could just go to shit and, you know, it wouldn't be worth it at all, right? So the Emperor, you know, he's like, okay, I will do my absolute best to not get Kaguya to, you know, find out that. Spoiler alert, he does a terrible fucking job at that and basically tells it to her. <laughs> He then cut to the Emperor and Kaguya basically talking to each other. You know, the Emperor is like, oh, thank you, Kaguya. I'm so honored to be talking to you, right? Kaguya is like, oh, yeah, no, don't worry about it, man. She basically just wanted to find out who wrote the, who wrote the letters, right? Because, um, in her words, after reading those letters, you know, hundreds of times, you know, she's basically just become enamored by the person that's written them, right? She wants to know more about this specific person, right? So then she basically suddenly just starts looking around the Emperor, you know, in a spinning way, right? And, you know, he's, she's checking him out, all right? The Emperor is a little confused at this, but, you know, he's like, all right, whatever, she's cute, she's beautiful, all right? I'll let this one slide, right? But, you know, after she's done checking him out, she points out that she's kind of disappointed in who that person is i mean no disrespect of course right but you know she's still a little bit disappointed in you know who showed up now after kaguya points out that hmm that's not really who i expected in the person that would write such you know beautiful letters right obviously the emperor gets offended all right and you know he's like hey yeah, yeah, yeah calm down a little bit right but Kaguya points out that no, it's not about the looks. It's about what matters on the inside. It's the personality that counts. So, you know, very cheesy stuff, right? Now, the Emperor, obviously not wanting Kaguya to find out that he didn't actually write those letters, is like, yes, 100%. I totally agree with that statement. That statement is true, right? And, you know, he, he's definitely not trying to, you know, convince Kaguya that I definitely wrote those letters, right? It's also kind of ironic that he says that, right? Because I'm pretty sure he only falls in love with Kaguya because of the looks and not about the personality. But hey, I'm not here to point that out. I'm, uh, well, I did point it out, but you know, it's kind of funny. Speaking of the whole, yeah, I definitely wrote those letters, by the way. Kaguya, you know, asks him a question that in all honesty, if I was in his shoes, I would definitely think, oh shit, she absolutely knows that I was fucking lying to her, right? She says it in a way, so, you know, she's like, yeah, uh-huh, sure, you definitely wrote those letters, right? You know, she's like, so, did you really write those letters? Did you, the, the, the person I'm looking at right now, really write those letters, right? Now the Emperor, you know, everyone's waiting for him to answer, right? He's in his mind right now. He's like, oh shit, she probably actually knows, right? He's thinking of a way to bullshit his way out, right? When he remembers Kusa Chen basically telling him, remember, if this happens, bullshit your way out of it. Think of something, okay? Anything, all right? So the Emperor decides to be like, no, I did not write those letters. I had a friend to help me out writing those letters, okay?
Now, you would think, you know, this would be the end of the relationship, right? Kaguya would never be interested in someone that, you know, plagiarizes, right? It's not really plagiarism when you ask your friend today. Does it? That's a good, that's a good question. Does that count as plagiarism? Because he is using someone's work, but then again, it's with consent. Granted, he didn't do anything with it. He merely just copied and pasted. In which case, you know, he just grabbed it and was like, that's mine. <laughs> so does this count as plagiarism? It probably does in some circles of law. In my circle of law, which is basically utter nonsense, I'm going to say that it's a little bit of plagiarism. Obviously, you know, Skusa Chan was consenting to it, right? But like, still, it's, it's kind of like a ghostwriter, all right? When you think about it, right? Is, is, that, is that legal? Is a ghostwriter technically legal? Like... People can use ghostwriters and stuff, right? Fucking Ricegum apparently used a ghostwriter for most of his songs, right? But does it does it mean that you still take credit for it? it whatever, we're not getting into that argument, okay? But he does say to his Kaguya that, yeah, I didn't write those letters, right? And apparently Kaguya is like, oh, well, that's interesting because I would have never found out that you actually wrote those letters, right? And apparently, because of the fact that uh, he can't lie, this means to Kaguya that uh, the feelings that he has for her are 100% true, absolutely no bullshit, right? So, basically, apparently, the Kaguya has indirectly said that, you know, the Emperor has won, right? The other noblemen, they're also, like, kind of there in the corner just looking at him, right? And... The remaining three all realize that um, it's kind of pointless to keep going when, you know, basically the Emperor won, right? And, you know, they're like, yeah, let's just go home. There's no, there's no point trying anyways, right? So they give up and leave. And that's actually where the chapter ends off. Very good chapter. Still don't know why it took me so long. I always keep saying that specific part. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this. I really did. Um... They, they, they haven't done as of uh recording one two thousand two hundred and three that came out maybe like two days ago by the brazilians shout out to the brazilians by the way those guys are very very consistent but um apart from that like i said nothing interesting to say 202 is coming out maybe a day or two after this emphasis on the maybe uh so apart from that i have nothing interesting to say and goodbye.